In this video, we'll talk about the decision matrix that's embedded in the House of Quality, uh, which is a tool that you'll find in the Demadver Toolbox Kit. So uh, let's begin by talking about what the benefit of a QFD decision matrix is, and it's going to give you a method of helping you make a decision about which of your concepts is going to be the best. We'd like to uh, spend some time in this video talking about uh, what's actually going on in that decision ma matrix and help you interpret the data that you're getting based on the information you've provided within the house of quality. And the only key term that we'll run into in this discussion are is the key term of weighting factors. If you'd like to know more about quality function deployment, you can uh, get that information out of our text uh, between pages 98 and 109. So the concept selection using quality function deployment and the tool that's in the Demandver notebook, well, we're going to use a particular region of the house of quality under uh, the area identified as market. And beneath that, we'll see meets requirements. And we'll take a look at the layout of that house of quality in just a second, and I'll show you more specifically where those areas in the house of quality appear. The decision matrix is right under that, and that data will help you tell which of your concepts is meeting the most of the most critical customer requirements. And ideally, we'll have one concept that stands out above the rest by showing at least a 10% uh, higher value of uh, ranking than the remainder of the concepts. The other thing is that we can look at combinations of concepts and maybe take the best of each of those and combine them to yet come up with uh, yet another concept. And there's a tool called a morphological matrix, uh, which will help you generate ideas uh, to meet different customer requirements. And uh, we can talk about morphological matrix matrices as the need arises. Well, let's review what we did with this quality function deployment house of quality tool to begin with. We started out by stating an overall function or objective that our customer wants us to meet with a design. We define those criteria and those requirements that would be embedded in that design. And then we started doing some research. We started looking for benchmarks from competitors and maybe even got to the point where we're ready to simulate a design and start generating data with a math model. But we're at the point where we need to start considering uh, concepts and design options. And we want to do the best job that we can in fulfilling those customer criteria and fulfilling those criteria as best as we can. And so we need some tools to tell us which of our concepts are doing the best job of that and which ones we may want to um, strengthen by changing some of the engineering specifications. So what we're after here in using this tool is to optimize or maximize uh, our decision outcomes by the choices of the engineering specifications that we require and trying to meet competitor benchmarks. Well, this is the house of quality and the area that we're interested in is this area right in here where it says market and whether or not um, the competition, which would be identified by these four blocks you see here under competition. And then here are our concepts. And meet requirements is the degree to which each of our competitors are meeting these customer requirements. Remember, these are all of the critical to quality parameters. These are the things our customer has told us that they would like to see in that design. And we as engineers have come up with these engineering specifications or parameters that will help embed um, the requirements in our design. This area again speaks to how our competitors are meeting each one of those requirements. So we'll rank uh, the competition in terms of their ability to meet say requirement number one or requirement number two or so forth. And of course we want to do the same with our concepts. We want to see how each of our concepts is doing in meeting each one of these requirements by ranking them accordingly. Well, when we get through with that process of ranking our competition and their ability to meet all of the customer requirements, we'll want to look at this area 
down below, which is where the decision matrix results are being stored. And those results will tell us which of our concepts is standing above the others and which of our competitors uh, are standing above the others. Now we actually have hard data down here where we're recording uh, specific uh, numerical qualities related to our competition and related to um, our concepts. That information for our concepts may be coming from uh, simulations. So here's an example of where uh, we've got our concepts and these are um, the four that we've come up with. These would be our competition, competition one, competition two, three, and four, and so forth. And then these are the concepts that we've um, established and that we are trying to improve in order to either meet or exceed uh, our competitors um, for the purpose of trying to say capture uh, a particular segment of the market. Well, you see here we have a color code and for the competitors we have one green, the 2560 value for this particular um, competitor's product. And then on the low end of that we have this 1947 uh, value. Well the green one is going to be the lead competitor. So this competitor is doing a better job at embedding uh, those customer requirements in their product than say this this particular product is. Now with regard to our concepts, we're actually, this one shows a great deal of promise because we're actually exceeding anything that the competition does here and our concepts, our remaining three concepts are within 10% of our best. So it'll only appear red, the decision matrix will turn the cell red if we're falling, that value falls um, well below the 10% threshold of the, the best concept. So these three concepts are within 10% of uh, the same value as our lead. Uh, so we may well want to look at combinations of these concepts to try to exceed even uh, the one that's standing out above the others at the present time. So the highest value, again, is our best design uh, or the, the competition's best um, the best product within our competition group. Uh, the white blocks are within 10%. And so again, we don't want to dismiss those. We want to look at them uh, since they're relatively close and see if there are things in those uh, concepts that we can combine to yet uh, come up with even a, a better concept than the ones we have existing. So we have the critical to quality parameters. Those are the customer requirements and we're capturing those requirements with these features or engineering specifications. And we want to look at the House of Quality to determine which of those features or which of those engineering specifications are actually most critical. There may be some in there that are more critical than others and we want to look at how we can change those to move the direction of a concept one way or another. Um, we also need to look at what um, our competition is doing uh, with those critical to quality parameters, how the uh, market, uh, the competition in the market is handling those, look at our best competitors, look at what their specifications are to see if we can embed some of those features that they're including uh, in our own concepts. And we want to look at those specifications. We want hard data. Uh, the specifications from the competitors in addition to numbers coming from our own simulations or math models to help us determine what changing uh, an engineering parameter, um, what effect that may have on uh, increasing or decreasing the performance or improving the function of a concept. So again, uh, here we have our um, various customers and what it is each of those customers is wanting to see in terms of uh, a critical to quality parameter. And we're ranking those. So for example, uh, consumer ranks durability very high as does marketing. However, the people producing this particular product uh, may not be as concerned about durability as they are say something about the overall size or weight or ease with which this product can be handled. So. We need to look at, obviously, how important um, 
our chief customer is considering each requirement and we need to base our decisions on um, the, the rankings and uh, the concepts that we're generating with the decision matrix uh, both on numbers on numerical measures but then also we want to use our intuition and uh, our common sense we need to be prepared to justify our choices so for what reason did we choose uh, concept A over concept B and be prepared to argue that choice uh, rationally and with meaningful data that's produced with simulations or comparisons with competitors in the market and so forth. So in looking at these design matrices and these decision matrices uh, in the QFD, we need to ask ourselves, is there hidden subjectivity? Is there something we're overlooking? Is the rating that we're getting from these decision matrices really pointing to what would truly be considered the best choice? It's okay to approach some of these numbers with some skepticism because it will encourage us to be more robust with the information that we're producing to support our decisions and the numbers that the QFD decision matrix is coming up with. Uh, again, your intuition is very important. If numbers aren't quite coming out right, if a concept that you didn't suspicion um, was going to be very strong is showing a lot of strength, it's not to suggest that the numbers are wrong or that you've put in some wrong numbers, but you want to look very carefully at that to make sure that you're not overlooking um, something in the modeling that could be figured very prominently in the numbers that may not be as significant as it appears to be. Uh, are there any criteria that we're missing? Is there anything that the decision matrix isn't capturing? Um, can we look at close concepts to combine features uh, that would strengthen uh, the existing concept to make it even better or, or come up with yet additional concepts? Uh, we need to evaluate our assumptions, question our assumptions, question the data, again, take a um, skeptical approach, um, and make sure that you are prepared to justify uh, the numbers that you're getting with um, support, either citations from um, document, competitor documents, or from your math models. Look at any drawbacks um, that might not be showing up with the numbers. Uh, look at uh, options that maybe weren't considered or weren't chosen. Why didn't a particular concept make it into the top group? Uh, is there something there? Is there just maybe one engineering specification or one customer requirement that could really change the direction of your concept choice? Uh, what are the major strengths of those that were chosen? So look at both strengths and weaknesses in those concepts that are kind of be shown as your lead concept and look at those drawbacks in the ones that weren't selected to try to learn something about how maybe those may be strengthened. And again, uh, it's important to be prepared to justify uh, your choices. You can definitely go through and change the rankings or the impact of the engineering specifications on these numbers, but be objective and I can't uh, stress enough um, your preparation in being prepared to document your decisions. Uh, good, use some good basic um, mathematical foundations, physical um, concepts to show that your, your work is robust and that you can defend um, the work that you're, you're doing with uh, your concepts. What to do to include more objectivity? Uh, again, combine concepts. That's always a good option. Um, be sure and record your conversations in your meetings so that you can recall important points that people made. It may be easy to overlook some things that occurred some time ago. So good note taking and reflecting on those conversations can be good in helping you make the right decisions on these concepts as well. If you have time, you can actually build some what are called fast prototypes. They don't need to be anything elaborate. Uh, sometimes you can even get away with making things out of clay or cardboard or just anything that's available. If nothing else, sometimes a CAD layout will, will help you or a very simplistic CAD model may help. So all of those things combined can help you um, include more objectivity in your choice of concepts. So uh, you've got the decision matrix, which is based on your 
uh, customer rankings and how you've ranked your concepts and meeting each one of those customer requirements, how your competitors have ranked uh, with regard to each one of those customer requirements. Make sure that your engineering specifications are justified and that they are having the impact on your designs that you anticipate. A good, a, again, a best way to do this is maybe with a simulation or math model. Um, any data, any hard data that you're getting, uh, make sure that you can document that and uh, produce that data if it's requested. Your discussions and meeting minutes can come in very handy and be prepared to uh, present your decision and reasons supporting your choice of a lead concept. So again, uh, the concept selection process, we're going to be using in part the House of Quality to embed our customer requirements along with rankings of our concepts and being able to adequately embed those concepts and functional decomposition is the process we go through in helping us to get a simplistic math model going where we break down the overall function of our concepts, look at the inputs and how the engineering parameters are controlling those inputs to get the desired output. Uh, morphological matrices will help your team come up with yet additional alternative ways of looking at functions which in turn may help you think of uh, alternative ways to include mechanical components to get at those chief functions. We've looked at pew charts. Uh, there's a film or a video uh, regarding the use of pew charts. That will help you getting a good fundamental start on which concepts you should be looking most closely at. The QFD decision matrix is embeds a lot more data, a lot more information is going into that than does the pew chart, and we'll close off our uh, concept selection methodologies with a method known as the analytical hierarchy process, which is a very robust way, very objective way of selecting concepts. So that's our discussion of QFD and decision matrices. And again, uh, this is an initiation phase tool, so you should be prepared to produce um, justification for what your QFD decision matrix is telling you about which lead concepts um, are, or which concepts are going to be your, your lead concepts.